friends, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Yvonne and you are on Ginger Chick Rehab where I love to take secondhand finds and make them over for you all and share my vision in the process with you all. So in today's video, I have a couple items that I am making over some trash to treasure, some secondhand finds, and oh my goodness, using some IOD and some fusion paint. Oh, you guys just wait and see. Now, first off, I'm going to work on these two. Now, they're just MDF board. They're nothing special, but there's just something about rounds. And I love the way that these are hung with this ribbon and the stars. But the patriotic is a little faded. It's a little dated. Um, so I'm going to go ahead. And these were just tacked on. So they're pretty easy to remove, even though they're still already in hanger system on the back. I really do love the, those stars on the front of these is paper so I'm going to take some 80 grit sandpaper and I'm going to just take my time and get it sanded off for my prep of these all I'm going to do is just go ahead and I just wiped them down with Clorox wipes they're MDF board so I don't want to get them too awful wet to get these painted up, I'm going to be using Fusion Paint in the color Chocolate. Oh, it is a nice, rich brown paint. I did two coats of paint to completely cover, and now I want to distress. I want to bring out those sharp edges just using some 220 sandpaper on my orbital sander. If you're wondering what I was going to be putting on it, oh my, y'all, I fell in love with these little birdies when I saw them on Zazzle. Oh, look at, and one with the mushroom. I just absolutely love, and I thought these would be perfect for these rounds. Though, the, you know, they come in squares, we're just going to have to tweak them a little bit to fit those rounds. No, I keep calling them rounds and they are oval. I know that. I know that, y'all. So now I'm going to be doing some decoupage on them. But I really like to, I'm really loving backing the decoupage on copier paper. So that is what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to use some Mod Podge on the back of this decoupage paper and apply it to the copier paper. To shape my paper and give it some age I am doing a burning technique I just have a some bowl of water <laughs> a lighter and then the Mod Podge is still wet so the outer little piece of copier paper that I left there is what's burning and it's just going to give that nice distressed edging to the tip of this now I'm going to go ahead and burn it first and see how it fits on the ovals and um if i need to round the corners a little bit more i wanted to save as much of the image as i can and i wanted to see if i was going to be able to round the edges even more burning it slowly just burning it seemed to work i like that unevenness of it i like that it's not a perfect oval shape itself so now all i have to do is put some more mod podge on the back of the copier paper that has the decoupage paper on and then apply it to the board as my paper started to dry especially with the burning of the edges the edges really want to curl up so all I do is wet a rag and then just press it down firmly just you know just dampen rag not soaking just enough that it presses those edges down know how that goes what works for one thing doesn't work for the other thing so for the other one I did have to round my edges a little bit and burn it a little bit more and I let my Mod Podge dry and now I'm just going to seal that paper in using some polycrylic I know you could put the Mod Podge back on the top of it but because I burnt those edges sometimes you might smear the ash of the edges so I rather just do something to spray it on 
Now to freshen up these stars, I painted them black. I used the Coal Fusions paint to get them painted up. I just thought that it was just a nice, unique feature. And I'm going to add a little distressing to these also. Just They've got that nice sharp edges on the star part. Just some 220 sandpaper to sand down. I, I just absolutely... I I fall for stars all the time. So I love that that's probably what attracted me to these ovals in the first place. And there's really nothing wrong with these ribbons. So I'm going to go ahead and reuse those ribbons. I'm changing out the tacks because, of course, I bent the tacks. But I think this is a cute way to hang these. my next project I have this little glass dome I love that it has a bottom oh the possibilities of this all and I love the idea of putting some natural elements in the middle I love this knotty wood that we got at auction and I think it will it'll fill up this dome perfectly I, of course I'm going to add some more to it but not just the piece of wood but oh isn't that wood? That wood is just so cool. Whether it's a knot from the tree or a tree root, I don't know, but it is just a cool piece. I could cut it that it has a flat bottom, but there's three points on it that actually touch the wood. So all I'm going to do is put plenty of hot glue to attach it to the bottom piece. And then I wanted to wait till my glue was good and dry, hardened before starting to work on it. So now I'm going to do, if you watched before, I'm going to do some glowy mushrooms. I just love those glowy mushrooms. So you take a fairy light that I got off Amazon. It's battery powered. And then you double up where the lights are. You twist the wire and that starts to become the stem of the mushroom. After I've all, twisted all my two parts together, it's time to start attaching it to the tree. Oh my goodness. So super easy to do this just by using hot glue. You just have to wait for the hot glue to harden a little bit, but um, it's just an, such an easy, fun project. <laughs> The next step, I need to thicken up my wires. And all you do with this is you make sure that when I'm using my hot glue gun, it runs really hot. So I have to turn mine on and off to control my temperature. But when I'm doing this part, I want it to be nice and hot. So I want to start with, start off with it hot. So that way it will run down the stems of the wire to make the stems of the mushrooms. Now I need to make my mu mushroom top. So all I'm going to do is just make little puddles of the hot glue on this metal form. So as long as I don't let them completely get completely cold, um, they, will be, they will be easily to be removed. Before the first time I did this, I let them completely cool a lot. And so they're a little bit stubborn. They didn't want to come off. But, you know, every, every project you do, you get a little bit better at it each time. And then now I'm just going to go ahead and get those glued on to those stems. Just a little bit of hot glue. Now I twisted my stem tops a little bit 
downward this time just trying to give myself a little bit different of emotions to see how I like that the fun of crafting is even when you're doing the same thing you've done before you know just tweaking it to see how this technique works compared to the last technique you did it's just fun working working with your creativity now that I have my mushroom tops on, I'm going to go ahead and start adding some of this floral moss. I love the green color at all. I actually bought it at an antique store because it's hard to find that green color. Sometimes it's way too brown, but I need something to start covering up the wire that goes from mushroom to mushroom. So a little bit of hot glue, trying to find a clump of the moss and then getting it attached. And I also want to run it along the bottom to help hide the battery power mechanism and then just make it look like it's on the ground where the moss would have grown up it. I have my moss added. I'm going in with some tiny pine cones. I thrifted these, but I know you can buy them at Hobby Lobby and the Dollar Tree store at the Christmas time. I just love these little bitty pine cones. It just adds a little bit more visual um, a lot more texture to this piece. And I also want to add more color to this. So I have this mustard colored flower. It's a dried flower. And as soon as I break it off the stem, it's all going to fall apart. <laughs> but I only want the little pieces anyway to glue it in there. I just love that yellow color. And to add some more color to this piece, I'm going to go ahead and use the Woodland Creatures. I'm going to do a couple little ladybugs. I just thought, oh, would that not be so cute on this? So just some IOD clay. This is really simple to do. Um, you just press that clay in there and then pop it out. glue them on I'm just going to be using some of the Starbond CA glue I like this glue because it dries fast that way I know my air dry clay won't dry fast but my glue is going to dry and I can still work on the project without having to worry about it and moving away or like slipping away or moving around so I did a total of three of these little ladybugs I haven't shared this tip about protecting your tip to your CA glue you just kind of dip it in Vaseline it helps prevent it from blocking up and it also helps prevent the top gluing onto it. I want to color my ladybugs in and I'm going to be using Fusion's Fork York Red. It's just a nice soft undertones of brown red that it's not like in your face so bright of a red. I'm also going to be painting my mushroom tops with that same red. Now, because this is glue, um, it may not cover in one or two coats. You kind of have to get that first coat on there and let it dry um, to be your base coat for something to the next coat of paint to be able to grab onto. I'm going to use Fusion's Coal Black to paint the ladybugs top of their heads, their heads black, and then give them some of those signature spots. Next, I need to go in and paint my stems, and I'm just going to be using the cashmere color. And it probably would have been better, maybe. Maybe it would have been better to do it before I got it all on. But sometimes you work on a project and you vision it as you go along. So I wasn't sure if I was going to paint the stems to begin with, but I really do think that they need some color. I'll flip my brush over and do that same technique where I dip the end of it into the paint to give the mushroom some spots. And the one last detail I want to add is a butterfly. So yeah, we got a lot of IOD going on here, but it's awesome. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and use one of their transfers. I'm going to put it on some brown cardstock. That way it will thick thicken it up um, and you still 
the same thing. You have to rub it onto the cardstock and then remove it. But oh my goodness. So I'm just going to cut it out the shape of that butterfly moth, whichever way you see it. <laughs> I think the butterfly is a little too orange. It's not popping enough. So I'm just taking that same paintbrush I, I used to paint the red. I'm not adding any more paint to it, but I'm just going over that transfer and adding that red to it. And that just seems to be richening it up. my last project I'm going to be making over this clock. Now the mechanism doesn't work. The arms end up swinging. I, it was a grab and go at a Goodwill and I didn't have a battery on me to make sure that it worked. And so since I paid up for it, I'm not going to buy a new mechanism for it, but I am going to still make it over. So first off, I got to take off the back. So my idea for this is kind of like a fairy garden, but, you know, a piece of trash that's been out in the wilderness and nature just took it over. So, yes, I'm going to go back to that woodland creature mold again. And first off, I'm going to start making a whole bunch of ferns to fill in on the sides. I'm going to go ahead and add some of the toadstool ones. So yes, I'm just going to do multiple different sizes and shapes of the toadstools just going up into the middle. tell you it was a really hard decision as I'm editing I can see how beautiful this was just maybe I should have kept it white but, but you know I didn't but yeah when I was editing it I was like 
oh my gosh, that's really pretty in white. But no, we're, it, we got colored, y'all. So now I'm just adding some of the fern color from Fusion onto my leaves. Yes, I'm just going to give it that pop of color. Now the clay is still wet. So sometimes when it's still wet, I will add a little bit of water on my paintbrush and I'll help move around that paint a little bit better on that wet clay. different colors together just gives the item so much more dimension so I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of the brown and I'm working with my paint why it's still wet so adding color on top of color just really blends this in now that that big mushroom has that nice under that is showing so I really wanted to make that pop by adding some of the chocolate for my mushroom tops I'm going to go ahead and use some of the bell wood it's almost has a green tint to it. You know, a lot of mushrooms are kind of that muted type of tone. Next, I'm going to take a little bit of the chocolate and just work from the under and blend it up just to, I believe it's the same type as the mushroom on the top, but you just can't see it's under. The bottom mushrooms, I chose to add some of more of that red color. I just love that red. I really do love this red color. I felt like as soon as I added the red, that's all you saw was the red. So I'm going to blend like on the tip of the mushrooms, some of the red in, and see how that works. What I said, you just keep working with a project till you love it. Though I don't have any of the orange paint infusion yet. I thought, you know what, I'm going to tone this down a little bit with orange. So maybe that red, even though I love the red, it just is overpowering the entire scene I have going on here. Add a little cashmere color to the stems and now I'm going back in I'm just wetting my paintbrush down I want to kind of take that aged look a little bit here and there on the outer rim of this clock face it's just paper so I'm not going to really mess with it too much just enough on the outer rim and then the hands a little bit just to give it some um, some age So there's just those items that you make over and you it leaves you wanting to do it again. And these were two examples of some previous videos that I made using the IOD toadstools. Oh my gosh, I just absolutely love them with the ferns and all. Yeah, yeah, all the, the, I, yeah I'm still on the spring line. I know that they're newly releasing the summer line for IOD but the spring line still has my heart, y'all. So anyway, love them, love the IOD, love the toadstools and all, everything about those. Oh my gosh, I just keep creating. I keep seeing things in the thrift store that I just keep can keep using on them. And I'm just slowly getting more and more of the um, 
fusion paints in my inventory. So give me a quick comment down below. What have you created with any of the spring line from IOD? Just absolutely gorgeous. And do you have a favorite fusion color? And have I inspired you to look at secondhand finds in a new way? Again, thanks for watching guys. And also thanks for being part of our YouTube family. But if you are new here and you want to be part of the YouTube family and you jo enjoyed today's content, please hit that subscription button along with the notification bell. So you know we've uploaded a new video and we will see you next time guys and you can see what I'm up to. Bye!